And welcome to Interpreting Scripture According to Scripture with Dallas Kapelka as we continue our journey through Genesis 1, going verse by verse. In this episode, Genesis 1, 3 through 5, part B, we continue with, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and morning the first day. So Genesis chapter context, we looked at in Genesis 1-2 of the earth being destroyed, its cities being laid waste, the population being decimated because God had come in judgment over the disobedient people and apostate people, covering them in darkness. Then God said, let there be light. And there was a new covenant corporate man. And God divided the light from the darkness He transferred them to the new ruling dominion. Well, why was it given a name? It's interesting when we take a look at Genesis 5, 1 through 2, it reads, This is the book of the generations of Adam in the day when God created man. He blessed them and named them man in the day when they were created. So here we have the type, the new light being named. So just as we read in Genesis 1, we get that there was light. So God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God separated the light from the darkness. Next, God gave the light a name. And here we read Genesis 1-2. In the day when God created man, the first day, God said, let there be light. So we'll take that and move forward as we read when Abraham was 99 years old. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, that I might make my covenant between me and you. And Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you. And what does he do? Immediately gives him a new name. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. Here is a new covenant man, getting a new name. That's what we just read with Adam. The new covenant man getting a new name. Very interesting. So we have the God called the light day and we have the naming of the corporate covenant man. This continues forward as we read your name Jacob. Jacob who is head over Israel. Jacob your name is no longer Jacob. You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. Thus he called him Israel. God called the light day, and here we have a new naming of the corporate covenant man. Your creator, O Jacob, formed you, O Israel, and I have called you by name. You are mine. So this naming identifies who the covenant head is, the covenant body is. Just as we see here with Adam, the head over his body of descendants is given his new name. Abram is given as head over a new body, a new name. And thus Jacob, as Israel, is given a new name, as covenant identity between them and God. We read, if my people who are called by my name, as we read, I have called you by name, you are mine. My people, if they call by name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. This is their covenant identity, their people and their name. We read, in the whole land, declares the Lord, a judgment coming, and pronouncing by Zechariah, saying, Two-thirds shall be cut off and perish, and one-third shall be left alive, and I will put this third into the fire, and refine them as ore refined silver, as one refined silver, and test them as gold is tested. Then they will call upon my name, and I will answer them. Why? Because they are my people. The Lord is my God. Just as we read with the new light and the new transference of the covenant people, what do we find? You who were called out of darkness into his marvelous light, once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. And they call upon his name. We also read this very interesting prophecy of a coming uh, scenario where Jacob, my servant, 
Israel whom I have chosen. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, uh, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen, for I will pour water on the thirsty ground, streams on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your offspring, to Jacob the servant and Israel the chosen. This one will say, I am the Lord's, and a One will call himself by the name of Jacob, and another will say, I am the Lord's, and call himself by the name of Israel. The people called by God's chosen name to secure their corporate identity. However, for a coming time in Isaiah, we read a very interesting thing. We read, for Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch, light. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. Interesting. The pronouncement of a new coming light and a new name. I will give in my house a name better than the sons, better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. The one who conquers, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never shall he go out of it. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God and my own new name. The people called by God's name to secure their corporate identity. For he who has ear, Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will give him a white stone with a new name. Therefore God has highly exalted Jesus and bestowed upon him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus at his name every knee shall bow. Christ is Lord, the new King of the light kingdom. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. Remember, this is the antitype. This is based upon the already precedent made by the type of Adam. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world, and he came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed on his name. Let us go back to Paul's conversion even. Paul takes on the name of Jesus, joining the covenant body with a very interesting description. Now, Ananias answered the Lord saying, Lord, I have heard from many about this man Paul and how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has the authority from the chief priests who bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is chosen, a chosen instrument of mine, to carry my name before the Gentiles. And remember, what was his charge earlier? It was to take the light to the darkness so that they could join in to the new kingdom of light. And here we get a description of Jesus telling us again, for he is a chosen instrument to carry his name. So Paul was going to bring the message of light. And he was going to give them a name. Before the Gentiles and the kings of the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. And whatever you do in word or deed. The New Testament church under the head and the body. Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Peter said repent and be baptized every one of you into the name of Jesus Christ, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Go for though go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We get an interesting dispute amongst the brethren during this time. Paul pleading with them, I appeal to you, brothers. By the name of our Lord Christ, that all of you agree that no divisions be among you, but that you be united of the same mind 
And what was he referring to? He says, what I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Well, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized into the name of Paul? This is a very interesting conversation because we hear a description of this baptism, to be baptized into the name of Christ. What did that mean? Baptized into a corporate group identity, into the name of Jesus, into the corporate covenant man. And as such, as were some of you, but you were washed You were sanctified and you were made justified. You were put into right standing before God. How? In the name of Jesus. A citizen in the kingdom of Jesus. In Genesis, we have a very interesting understanding coming before us with this understanding of the name. For now the whole earth had one language. And the same words. And a people migrated to the east, and they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen and mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its tops in the heavens. They're going to build a heavenly tower, a heavenly city. And what did they do? They said, Let us make a name. For ourselves. They formed for themselves a name to call upon, their own false god and false people, a man made pagan identity. But there was only salvation in no one else, no other name in which a man may be saved under heaven, which was the name of Jesus, given by God, not chosen by men. These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life, good and right standing before God. How? In his name. We read, Cursed be Canaan, but blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem. But Canaan will be the servant. Japheth can dwell in the tents of Shem, But Canaan will be the servant of who? Shem, who's identified with a corporate covenant identity, the member of God's household, and light being identified by name, the God of Shem. Just as we read the servant of Abraham speaking of God, saying, Then I bowed my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of Abraham. Even God, speaking to Isaac, identifies himself by Abraham's name. And the Lord appeared to him that same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, your father. I am the God of Abraham. That's how Isaac knew. God speaks to Jacob, another covenant head, another light, and says, and he dreamed, what we read, We have God speaking to Jacob, identifying himself again, how? Through the Abraham and through Abraham's son Isaac's name. And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac. That's how Jacob knew who this God was. Jacob himself identifies who that God is by how? using the corporate father's names. And Jacob said, O God of Abraham, O God of Isaac. This is the God of Israel. As God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. Their corporate identity, their identity with God through covenant promise of name and descendants. As we read, it is the God of Israel keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to your servants who walk before you. The very description given to Abraham when his name was changed 
I establish my covenant with you. Walk before me. This doesn't change with Jesus. Blessed be the God of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, he has made us a priest to his God, the God of Jesus Christ. The one who conquers, I will make him a pillar in my temple, or in the temple, rather, of my God. Never shall he go out of it. And I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which comes down from my God and my own new name, the people called by God's name to secure their corporate identity. So let's read chapter context. The earth had been destroyed, its cities had been laid waste, and the population had been decimated. Why? Because God had come in judgment over a disobedient and apostate people, covering them in darkness. Type and antitype. And what was the light? The covenant corporate man. And why was it divided from the darkness? Because it was transferred to the new ruling dominion. And why was it given a name? To have covenant identity before God. Type and antitype. And God said, let there be a corporate covenant man, and there was a new corporate covenant man. And God saw that the corporate covenant man was good, so God divided the new man from the old corporate covenant man. God gave the new man a name to identify him as God's people. And God gave the former people a designation to identify them as excluded from that people. There was evening and morning the first day of regeneration. God said, let there be light, and there was. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided that light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. If you enjoy the work I do here and like to support what it is, you can do so by following the information provided on the screen. I hope you find this interesting and exhilarating. I personally find it to be fascinating beyond all means. So I hope as much as I'm getting out of this, you who are watching this are likewise. So wherever you are, I hope this finds you well. And until the next one, God bless.